Hi, this is Donna. Welcome to DD Paper Crafts. And in today's video, we're going to be making this two tier triple gift box. This was inspired by some mooncake packaging which I saw on Pinterest. And you can see that the two smaller boxes pull out to the side and then sit down either side of the middle section which in itself is another gift box. And again, the two boxes pull up around the sides and sit back on the top. So let me show you how I made it. I'm starting with the larger box, which is four by two by two. For my base, which is going to be the white cardstock, I've got a piece which is eight by six along the eight inch side score at two and six rotate and on the shorter side score at two and four. In addition I need a piece for the lid which is going to be a simple flap lid. This measures five by three and on all four sides I'm scoring at half an inch. We'll start with the base piece, fold and burnish along all of the score lines. We're going to make a very simple box. I've got my piece in a landscape orientation and I'm going to cut up the first score line to the first horizontal and move along and cut up the second score line to the first horizontal and then cut a wedge from each of the outer squares just to create our glue tabs. Rotate and repeat on the other side. And what I am going to do is just trim off some of this cardstock from the glue tabs, approximately half an inch. This is going to add some reinforcement to the sides of the box, but it just makes sure that as the flaps meet towards the middle, they don't cross over. Add glue to the glue tab pull up the sides of the box and make sure you get a nice right angle and repeat that on the remaining corners. So this is our box base. I want to add a finger notch into this front section. I'm just going to make a pencil mark at two inches and then use my circle punch just to create a shallow finger notch in the front but this is my personal choice. Take the lid piece, fold and burnish along all of the score lines. Remove the four corners where the score lines intersect. This is going to be my hinge flap, so I'm going to cut a slight wedge from the ends of this tab and also a slight wedge from the ends of the side glue tabs nearest to the hinge. And at the moment I'm leaving the other end of those pieces square. This is the tab that's going to sit inside the box and I'm just going to round off the corners of those just because that's my preferred look. Use my construction glue, add it to the hinge section and sit the lid inside the box. Once that's pressed in, I'm going to push the side flaps in and close the lid. I can see that I need to cut the ends of those side tabs. So I'm going to mark with a pencil where they hit the inside of the box. Do that on both tabs. And then I will go in with my scissors and just cut that slight wedge away from the ends of those tabs. My lid now fits in nicely. I'm going to reopen that and just burnish the hinge. So that is our base box. I'm now going to make the two smaller boxes which are going to sit on the top. And for each box you'll need one piece which is three by eight and a quarter. 
along the three inch side score at half and two and a half and along the long side score at half two two and three quarters four and a quarter and six and a quarter and for the two sides of the box you'll need two pieces which are two by two along the top edge I'm going to make a pencil mark at one and a half inches rotate 90 degrees and make a pencil mark at half an inch like so and cut away the diagonal between the two pencil marks go back to the box base and fold and burnish all of the score lines with the piece with the two small squares in front of you cut up the first score line and remove that outer square repeat on the other side rotate and cut up each of the score lines within the half inch tab up to the horizontal so we're creating a series of glue tabs I'm going to start by rounding off the corners of the tab because that's my personal preference this set of flaps here you can either cut those away which will give you this sort of opening so there's no side flaps alternatively leave those in and that will give you the side flaps like so decide which look you want to go for I'm going to cut mine away because I've already cut them away on my tester box I'm going to cut straight up the half inch score line to remove those and then work in along each of the tabs I'm going to cut a wedge from the ends of each of them I'm going to use my circle punch and just add a finger notch into the opposite end to the half inch tab. Take your side piece and we're going to create our boxes and your shortest edge, this one here, is going to run alongside what will be the front of the box, in my case where I've added my finger notch. I'm going to use my quick grab glue and work my way around adding the tabs to the side section to create the box if you've left the flaps in this piece here which is on the slope is the last tab that you're going to stick down. Once I'm happy I'm going to just flip the lid section back, lay that down and go in with my score tool just to burnish down the tabs. I can then fold in each of the tabs on the opposite side, add my glue and take my second side panel and adhere that on and take time to make sure that sits in place and you get the correct shape and once I'm happy I'll go in with my score tool and burnish down the tabs so if we take our largest box the two smaller boxes will sit on the top and they sit neatly on the top of the box like so and we now want to create the wrap I've got two strips which are 8 by 2 I'm going to start by adding glue to the lid flap of one of the smaller boxes and the slope so my wrap is exactly the same width as the box so you want to take your time as you're adding the glue to make sure that the sides of the wrap and the sides of the box line up I'm going to lay my box upside down and then pull up the section to cover this slope and once that's in place I'm just going to go in with my score tool and burnish that down from the underside flip the piece back and add glue to the back of the box and take your time with this you want to make sure that you get a nice neat finish 
I'm just going to fold the lid back just so the wrap starts to get into its shape. Burnish the back down. Take the bottom box and add glue to the bottom of this box and I'm going just over halfway along. Sit the smaller box on top of the larger box and pull the wrap round to the base of the bottom box. You want it to be as tight as you can. I'm gently burnishing the corner and pushing the base into place. Before the glue is completely dry, just move the small box out and sit it beside the bigger box just to make sure it fits properly. Now, obviously, there is going to be an element of bounce and spring in this smaller box until it's got something in it. But if I fill this with some beads for demonstration purposes, you can see that sits nicely next to the box and sits nicely on top of the box. You now want to repeat that with the second box, which is going to sit on this side. So this is the box. So the two top come down and slot either side. I'm going to go ahead and carry on with the rest of my decoration. Here's the finished decorated box. I've created a simple closure which was three layers of black cardstock with DSP on top and then I've punched a hole through the middle and a brad secures the discs to the top of the lid and on one of the discs I've added some cord to the underside. So that wraps around like so. I did add some DSP to the inside of the lids just to cover the brads. I filled mine with beads just for demonstration purposes. But that has a really nice profile and these two will move to the side and the, you can then access the bigger bottom box. Overall, I'm really happy with how this has come out. It's come out better than I thought it would. The only thing I would do differently is when I make the lid on the smaller boxes, I will leave the two small tabs just because I think that helps you get a better fit on the lid. What I will reiterate is when the boxes are emptied, there is a spring to the two outer boxes. This doesn't mean that you've made the box wrong. It's just because they don't have any weight in them. If you wanted to resize this, it's not difficult to resize at all. The key element to bear in mind is the two smaller boxes are going to be, each box is going to be half the length of the larger box so they fill the top space. And the width of your smaller box is going to be the height of the larger box so that the wrap element works and the boxes can come down and sit next to the larger box. For example, if you wanted a six inch base box, it would be six inches long, three inches high, and then each of the two small boxes would be three inches in width. An eight inch box would be four inches height and each of the small boxes would be four inches in width and so on and so forth. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.